This week on Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I are back from our trip to Urban Renewal as we drink some Buckle Down Love Tap Pale Ale and we recap our last couple of weeks drinking around the city. All that more on this week's episode. What did we do these last three weeks, Zoe? Do you, what'd you make it to? Yeah, because, you know, it's going to court clock out, boop, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. I, I, how's, that, how's that beer? It's what you think it is. It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to, every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Shmulewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And we're back in the office after our trip up to Urban Renewal. It seems like it's week. been a long time, man. You it know? does. Even though it's a weekly show, we could miss one week. It's like, man, it's been forever. But we had the holiday week Yeah, fourth. There, and so it's been a little bit. Um, I tell you, man, uh, that James Moriarty is an interesting cat, man. Like Urban Renewal's brewmaster. So mm-hmm. if I got this right, he... He's from the East Coast, but he spent some time in, uh, like, the Midwest, like in Iowa, right? Oh, uh, yeah. And picked up a gig with, like, a crew that sells equipment, brewing equipment, which led to him traveling and building out breweries. Yeah, I don't think it was Iowa, right? but it was somewhere. It was somewhere in the Midwest, right? Uh, no, maybe Nebraska, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I forget. The we just recorded the fucking episode, right? I, I forgot. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was in the after show, after we, you know, we had a couple beers, we're talking to him, and he's like, you know, he's telling all these stories about China and life on the road, and yeah. and you've been to China, and it was just like, I'm like, man, I don't really know anybody like this dude, and that sounds like a fun job, man. Uh, you know? Yeah, I think he did say it was fun if you're single, mm-hmm. and yeah, that's about it. If you're single and you can kind of do whatever, it's, yeah. it's a blast, because you're flying all over the place, and you're seeing new stuff right and yeah and i guess his crew that he he was building out breweries for they were doing so much work in china that they had like a chinese kind of like consulate if you will right like mm-hmm. there was a but there was an american base for brewing in china yeah. so mm-hmm. he's put these stories about like hey being at the airport i'm about to go see my family and then oh man a client has an, an issue on the other side of china can you go yeah <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but that was that was that was a good episode i liked i didn't know anything about him so yeah, or, or was, the crew it was fun hearing about what they're doing the space that they've already been in there for so long and the tap room is planned once Koval like kind of moves out of that yeah. space so that was surprising that's that's awesome for him yeah and them too uh, that's cool yeah um and it's good to see the old metro space like be still remain a brewery yeah yeah mm-hmm. uh, so if you missed that go back and check out that episode there is of course brewery noise happening in there but i think you'd still pick up what's being said yeah Uh, and then this week we're off the haze here and we're just drinking some classic pale ale right on man this is from the west burbs uh buckle down this is a love tap Mm -hmm. pale ale who has like a release this weekend with uh imperial oak really they got some like big stouts they're releasing a couple in cans and a couple on tap so i figured it was appropriate Every time you pick up a beer from them, I'm just like, you know, this is good drinking. I've never had a beer from them that I didn't like. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, all their beers are just, they are good beers. Like, they're not, I often don't go out of my way to go there. I, I'll go there sometimes, but mm-hmm. they're just like good beers when you have them. Like yeah. Said. This is uh, cr- the hops, Cryo Laurel, Meridian, and Cashmere hops. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know much about Meridian. I've heard of Cashmere, um, but. Lasky. Yeah. Cry- <laughs> <laughs> You know, we get you know we get the holiday off every year. You know, uh, cryo is like a style, I guess. It's a type of, it's a process where they're concentrating on like the oils and the bittering components of the hop. Okay, that's what it sounds like. So, so there's that. Cool. Yeah, I, I actually picked this up at uh, Trader Joe's. So mm-hmm. definitely, if you see this around, give it a try. Uh, it's up, what, three weeks, two weeks in cans. So yeah, it's still pretty fresh. Big powder blue and green bubble letters, mm-hmm. you know, right on. I'm digging it. Good offering. We yeah. Got our half acre bottom glasses rocking here. No, the unofficial <laughs> half acre podcast here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So with all of that, with last week's episode, what we're drinking, we need to recap some things we were drinking. We've been out, man. That we've seen that we've gone to. Yeah, man. 
Uh, Where do we start, Brad? Let's go back. We were briefly touching on phase three. Yes. The, I um, finally had some of this mystery. <laughs> <laughs> um, from, uh, from Lake Zurich, Illinois. Yeah. My uncle, who's an avid Chicago Beer Fast listener. Right on. He had a can. So I was like, well, I, I got to try this because I'm not waiting in line you're at like, 10 in the morning like Nick here. You're like, oh, don't shotgun that beer. There's only, <laughs> there's only three left after you drink that one. Uh, and I got to try it. And I don't remember it <laughs> because it tasted like many of the other beers we had that night. And it is no better or worse than 90% of the uh, hazy IPAs out there. Yeah, the hype is real. Um, and then they it's suburban hype, which is, you know, kind of interesting, right? It's like in reverse. Like you don't really get too excited about other suburban breweries to the point where you're like oh shit i gotta find this beer right like if you're in the city you don't really you don't really do that a whole lot Um, right yeah maybe what uh microphone see it's a very short list very short list right so and then these beers come out they're coming out every week essentially right there was one week where they had a hazelnut stout and one week where they had a lager but literally uh, every other release was like a double ipa okay and they're they're quite similar in look and mouthfeel right um Mouthfeel. Somebody, we were talking. Somebody was talking about the word mouthfeel and how they hate it. But oh, but dude, but the the hops are different, right? But I wonder how much the base beer is different in, in these releases because they're all they're all quite similar. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was good. I don't think you need to be waiting in line, paying like crazy amounts for this or trading for it. It's good. It's worth trying if you can try it. But man. Uh, I think the haze is sort of, it's weighing heavy on me right now. Yeah, I mean, like, we went to Ultra Fresh, right? And it's, you know, that's the most popular style, right? Mm-hmm. And then um, there is something to be said about, like, that hot burn you get from these kind of beers, right? Just okay. double IPAs that are just, like, really, you know, aggressively hot to the point where it's beyond peppery. Like, well, this kind of, if I have 16 more ounces of this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little painful, right? Right. I, I, st- I stand by since... We have been drinking these regularly, or they've been out. I've always said, like, two is kind of my limit. Like, yeah. I'm good after two. Most people, a lot of people are like, one. Two is like, you just drank two things of orange juice. I'm good. That's all. I, I, we, want, a, I want a beer now. Yeah. <laughs> we, and we've been learning that, you know, like, either at the beach or maybe, like, on the way home or something. Like, it's like, you, they, they, like, this can kind of, like, this isn't, like, fridge cold right but that's okay like it doesn't affect it right. but with with the with the haze it definitely affects a little bit more you definitely notice it you definitely want it to be as cold as possible yeah pretty yeah. damn cold um the the chase is i haven't chased beer in a long time so for me personally the chase is fun mm-hmm. um yeah but they're like you know they're acdc man they're making the same album every time you know people dig it so they keep making it <laughs> for <laughs> sure <know>? yeah no, no. <laughs> alarmist is doing the same thing you know they have the variants of Le Juice. Oh, yeah. It's still Le Juice, just with the one hop <laughs> amped up, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, if you like Le Juice, stick, here's all the different versions of it. But. Yeah. But yeah, like, to your point, man, I think we're coming, you know, we're st- we're starting to come, no, we're not coming to the end of it, but we are at a point where, okay, the saturation is real, we're looking for other stuff to drink at this point. Yeah, yeah. and 100 degree weather in Chicago I don't want a hazy beer, really. Like it gets, it's a lot in a hundred degree weather. I want, I want a, a love tap here. I want a pale ale. I, I want, want a, I'm Brad Chimluski, and I have like love tap. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Pilsner or even <laughs> the Radlers. Let's bring those kind of faded away a little bit. Um, yeah, man, not Natter Days. Is <laughs> is Radler? You know that, that thing is uh, that thing is out of control. Remember we had to uh, another level, like I. <laughs> You had some dude. You were taping some dude shoot shotgun in uh, Natter Days at Dark Lord Day. I had never. That was the first time I had seen this. I was like, uh, "What is this? I don't. I don't know what this is. I don't know what you're doing." We had we had Kaiser from Good Beer Hunting on the show for Uppers and Downers episode, and he was he wouldn't stop laughing because Natter Days took like best in show for like the People's Choice at some beer fest. Where like you know like Sierra Nevada was there and you know like New Belgium was there and Natter Days they're like no the best beer here is this fucking strawberry lemonade lager from who was it oh it's Natty Ice from Natty from Natty Ice. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh 
it's almost just uh, like, <laughs> it's like a joke on itself, right? It's like a, oh, that's great, man. That's great, but you know, we want something different, man. Yeah, maybe not that different. Maybe <laughs> not Natterdays. So yeah, man, Fourth of July. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was drinking face three on the beach, so that, okay. uh, that's me. Um, oh, I went to I went to a size game. Nice. Uh, nothing to report there. I did see three time uh, guest on the show, Justin Maynard, cool. formerly of the uh, Illinois Craft Brewers Guild, and then he he made a couple other stops after he, that. Was that the rest in peace? Uh, Bader yeah, Brow. he was on the Beta Brow episode. Um, yeah, he's uh, affiliated with a bar in the Southwest Burbs, actually not too far from Buckle Down. Oh, did he yeah. leave three fifty? Um, yeah, I believe so. Oh yeah, three fifty was another stop. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think he's just he's getting his cruise on, man. You know, he's like he's a, he's a gun for hire, man. Kind of like how uh, <laughs> Moriarty from Urban, Urban Renewal was at one yeah. point. I felt like 350 was the perfect yeah. day. The music, the concerts that right. they do. It was like beer was almost second. The beer was, it was to make money. Like, oh, we could just sell all these music nerds. Yeah, when they do, beer. they do 350 Fest across the street at the convention center and I I want to say there's like full on wrestling and yeah it's like a full it's like a full on music festival all day party mm-hmm. and beer is a piece of it. Yeah, they're like it's cheaper for us to make all this beer and and just party. And party. Yeah. And buy the beer and have this party. So let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Like beer's part of the bigger thing. Yeah. Um. Oh, but yeah, I saw him there and he's like, yeah, man, if you guys are around, you know, come down, man. Um. The name of the bar escapes me. We'll find out. But I'm like, you know, you know, Brad, if it's in Wicker Park, Brad's gonna go. If it's uh, he will he will surprise you and show up in the South Burbs unexpectedly. To, I've been trying to muster up the energy to go to Open Outcry. <laughs> like Tuesdays but, come around, I'm like, this weekend I'm going to Open Outcry. Yeah. And then. And then, then and then no. Uh, <laughs> um. Oh, but we were talking about um, you know, because he was responsible for the uh, when he was at Beta Bra, they did a really cool uh, South Side. Brewers Festival at Beta Brow. That was a Chicago Craft Beer Week event. Yeah. All Southside breweries. It was cool. So he's talking about doing something at Sox Park like that. Oh, that'd so, be awesome. So I'd like, I'd, I'd, I want to see him pull that off because that's actually a really cool venue like because of the concourse, you know, because of the, um, well, because there's a lot, there's a lot of room to, to get busy and then there's not a lot of stuff there. The only thing I've been there for that wasn't uh, baseball was the Chance the Rapper uh, Festival a few years ago. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. When you look at Wrigley, like, you know, Billy Joel's there, fucking Pearl Jam's there, you know, fucking uh, Jimmy Buffett's there. Like, there's always parties there. And even Soldier Field. Even Soldier Park. Field. And Sox Park has parking, you know. Mm-hmm. So that would be a good thing. It's an underused space. Yeah. There's just baseball there. You know. Baseball hasn't been bad lately, but there's just baseball there. <laughs> yeah. you know? uh, over that, the 4th of July weekend, I did myself a brewery crawl. We right started on. way early. We were watching the Women's World Cup game. Right on. You know, where they crushed. They are killing. That, those, that's... those Netherlands, they crushed them. Yeah. Uh, so we started with that. We I didn't know the women's U.S. team was that good. Yeah. I, I, I know now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we decided to continue this because we were going to Soldier Field. Right on. To watch the Gold Cup game. The men, oh, yeah. The U.S. versus Mexico. Yeah. I think Mexico got in that ass, right? They won. I think so. Uh that's fine. Yeah. I'm all for it. There was more people there rooting for Mexico than the people there rooting for the U.S. I thought it was Mexican Independence Day. I happened to go past it, and I didn't understand. <laughs> what I didn't realize it, it was at Soldier Field. Right. I'm like, oh. It could oh. have been unsafe for me if the U.S. would have won. <laughs> they would have been mad. There were gigantic, like, you know, the kind of flags that you see, like, at a stadium. Like, people had a two-by-four and a sunroof and a four and a, and a car. With that size flag hanging out of the, yeah. like, you know, out of a, a Taurus, yeah. you know. But in between those two games, we drank. Right on. And we did on the scooters. I have no idea what the fuck the Gold Cup is, but anyway. It's like uh, the World Cup's like the best one, and the World Cup, or the Gold Cup's like, you know, right. off, off years. Okay. Kind of thing. Okay. Fair That's enough. the only way I feel like I'm that like the Gold Cup. might I'm describe like, it right. What the fuck is the Gold Cup? So we hopped on the scooters, and we went to On Tour. Got a beer there. Right on. Scootered over to uh, Goose Island. Got a beer there. And we walked over to Great Central, because you can't. The scooters over there. It's I want to talk silly. about these scooters, man. 
right. So and then we tried to hold on. Then we tried to get some scooters. <laughs> couldn't find enough. So we just hopped in a Uber or a Lyft and went over to Cruz Blanca. Oh, right on. More food. Wait, this started at Soldier Field? No, this started uh, up north. Okay. We made it. We made it over to these stops. Got some tacos, some more beer, and then we went to Soldier Field. Right on. Uh, so that was a good little crawl in that neighborhood of you know on tour, one beer kind of. It was a warm day, so we're drinking whatever like pale or session IPA they had. Goose had some good stuff on. Um, they you know they're pouring Bourbon County, but we had been drinking previously, and we were drinking more later, so we we avoided those uh, Bourbon Counties. I might be here for the six ounces of Bourbon County. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I don't know. And then some friends hadn't been to Great Central yet. They wanted to check it out, yeah. so we went over there, had some stuff. They didn't really understand the concept of what it was. Really? They got that it was a, a contract brewery, Okay. but the fact that they also had their own beers. They got their own beers? Well, yeah, they have like their Oh, like a half, half right? Okay. Something else was a little confusing, I guess. A little bit. From an outsider, but I was like, you know, if this doesn't work out, it's, they can just be a brewery. They can just be a tap room then. Yeah. I got that going. Their space looks great. Mm -hmm. I love the gigantic ceilings. I almost like being there more than the other stops. They're an on tour. Are probably my favorite stops on the, in the brewing district. Yeah. yeah. Um, then we could have went over to District Brew Yards, but we needed uh, we wanted tacos. We were going to see Mexico play U.S., so we needed tacos. Right on. Cruz Blanca was. Now the so the every all the all the um all the scooters are run by Uber. No. I tried to get a scooter and it was run by Uber and I couldn't get it. It's like this scooter's not available. There are like five, there's like a dozen scooter companies. Yeah. Uh, there's Uber, there's Lime, there's Groovy, there's Bird. Because the scooter's a good way to get your brewery hop on. Yeah. And I was in it for not that. not supposed to drink and scooter. Oh. Yeah, you're not supposed to ride them on the street either. I mean, on the, on the sidewalk either. Yeah. You're not, there's a lot of things you're not, you're not supposed to ride two people to a scooter. But yeah. sometimes your other scooter's far. And you got with a friend, and you gotta go too. <laughs> I saw a dude. I saw a dude on a sidewalk. This is West Loop, cross like cross street from Haymarket, on a sidewalk with his baby. I mean, he had a, he had, the baby had a little baby helmet on. Okay. But he's on a sidewalk riding a scooter with his baby. I'm like, I hate you. Damn. And you, plus the one. Because the one I wanted I wanted to be on a scooter with him. Like, get this baby out of here. Take me out your scooter. <laughs> uh, Maven and I did find the scooters that. Maybe the best. The one's called Groove or Groovy. Yeah. And we were doing 15 miles an hour. We were passing up bikers. Yeah, because you were telling me. I was telling somebody that, yeah, Brad says they go pretty fast. And, uh, and then we had two guys on the street, and one guy gave us one uh, one speed, and another guy gave us another speed. They're not all equal. They're like, not all the same. They're yeah. not supposed to, They're all supposed to go pretty uh, mild speed, and yeah. some of them are getting fined now because they're going too fast. Yeah. These Groovy ones... They're fast. That's where it's at. Groovy. Yeah, groovy. They're like right. White, white and blue. Good to know. Yeah, I'm. I'm still. I'm ready to rock a scooter, man. I've, <laughs> I've seen them all the time now. It's making me mad. <laughs> Gotta just do that uh, district brew yards crawl on a scooter. Okay. That's what you're doing this weekend. Maybe the quake, quake, quake fest. Oh yeah, that's just, is that August? It's coming up. Yeah. Uh, but that was my like previous week. And then I don't really think I hit up anything else. I did stop in Alarmist before um, 4th of July, and I picked up some Crispy Boy, which I think I still have. We might drink that next week. That's their Pilsner. Right on. Picked up some of their latest Le Juice variant. And, yeah, talked to Gary Gully. You know, he was in there that day. They were watching Top Gun because it was the day before the 4th of July. Yeah, Top Gun, Top Gun, and, and Hayes. I still haven't seen that movie. That that, that would be. But something. you know, you know the movie. You I know, know, yeah, you I know the movie. You don't need to see it. Yeah, as long as you know it. Right on, man. Um, what did I do, man? Um, you know, I just my regular regular haunts, man. Tried to go to Rev because you know, I wanted to go to Rev. They were closed. Ended up at Maplewood at Metropolitan. Right. Rev's got the strawberry honey. Jacket. Yeah, Josh. Uh, Josh Riley came up and got one of those. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, he's on the list. He's on. He is on the list. We're not on the list. I don't for know. All of our. Uh, it's because we were talking shit about Rosa. Rosa, which I don't see anymore. See, 
So we we weren't wrong. I think we were ahead of the curve. Yeah. I actually think we spoke for the people. I think a lot of people felt that way. My sister told me once I had I brought Rosa to a smoke with for her years ago, and she was like, "Man, this shit tastes like pink champagne." And I was like, "Man, I haven't heard bale." There's like, like <laughs> it's just like a fucking like dirt. Like a Boone's Farm. <laughs> it's yeah. It's like champagne. it's like a fuzzy. It's like a fuzzy Boone's Farm, right? <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, you know what." <laughs> I mean, she's not wrong, you know. I don't, I don't see it anymore. But yeah, man, we were ahead of the curve and not like in Rosa, so I don't understand why we're not on this list, Brad. You know, we, they should be probably like tapping us. They for... should be thanking us for bringing it to the to the forefront. <laughs> this Rosa sitch, yeah, because last year um, there was there's a Italian restaurant that had a, a little block party, and Rosa was the, one of the featured things there. Rosa and the uh, it was, you know, a Campari drink that oh, made okay. likes that thing. So yeah, the, yeah. The this, yeah. Nice, yeah. But that was last year. I ain't seen it this year. Oh, but anyway. Um, oh, but Metropolitan, man, they're going to do when they get that patio going. I think they're waiting on like city approval. Mm-hmm. But this thing stretches out into the river. Right. It's a full on dock. Right? It's going to be a full on, dude, boat dock. But then I'm hoping like, like um, you can get cabs to go there, you can get water taxis to go there. You know, because like at Goose Island, there's a Goose Island stop and there's a Chinatown stop. And those are the two furthest stops. The other stops are just downtown. They go east, west, yeah. west loop to Michigan Ave. Man, if you could water taxi from Metro to Chinatown. <sighs> Man. What? I mean, it's perfect. It's perfect, though. That's a that's perfect. It's going to take you like full 40 minutes. There but. is a stop over by Goose Island, Clybourne. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's the Goose Island stop. Oh, OK. Yeah. But I mean, like this I when should, you I should do that this weekend. I know, man. When you're hanging out on that river, like even at even at a um, under construction on Metro's uh, patio, you can see the potential, right? And I've hung out there before, man. Like just like a couple blocks away, there's a Carrie Wood Field, right, right. Uh, right next to the high school. Oh, but there's a river there, and there's a kayaking uh, training facility right there. Right. So I mean, just all along, it's like this sleepy portion, north portion of the river, and um, you, they're building it up. Like you're gonna see like a. Uh, you know, like riverfront style things going in over there. But there's a lot there's a lot of action that could go in on the river. That's cool. So I'm excited about that. Um, right in the Avondale. Right down the street from uh, Loose Key Studio. I know. I'll be over there in a couple <clears throat> weeks. Going to do a meet up there. See what's happening at the space. Right on. I think I got a coffee. Um, I got a coffee Hellas on Nitro. So good. The little little okay. bitty fella, the uh, point two five C of the CL. Uh, not the not the not okay. the not the point five. That coffee beers. <clears throat> so good. Yeah, probably the most underrated program probably in the, in the city right there. Fucking fantastic, yeah. that Metro. Those Metro coffee beers on Nitro, psh, yeah. All, every time. Yeah, that was, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, those could be some of my favorite beer. Like, I forget about them, but they're so good when you have them. Like, yeah, man. Uh, shout out to Ravinia Brewing. Um, we, I didn't stop up there, <laughs> but, uh, but I was but close. They, <laughs> they yelled at you. They, you know, they, they yelled at me a little bit. I was up there, but you know. I was up there just in time to get a seat and watch the show, so I didn't get to kick it there. And, you know, um, like I was telling them, the food inside, I, I did a Ravinia piece on, on uh, Nicosi White, and it was like, the food at Ravinia is really good. It's a chef-driven menu. But at, when, at the brewery. At, at the, no, Ravinia, the, the festival, sorry. Oh, okay. The Ravinia festival. Mm-hmm. But then you go to Ravinia, and none of the food tastes as good as Ravinia, the brewery. Like, it's all kind of, like, run by kids. It's almost like Great America-esque, right, where, like, the kids are in there, and they don't really care what they serve you, right? They're just there doing their little stupid summer job. So it doesn't, it isn't, it's not what it could be. So the food at Ravinia Brewery is better than the food at Ravinia Festival. Okay. And Ravinia Brewery has mostly, they got tacos. They got tacos. uh, Uh, And they're good. And so they gave you shit on Twitter (laughs) for not coming out. They got in my ass a little bit, man. I'm like, all right, you know, to be fair. It's right there. As soon as you get off, it is literally like a block away. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like to make matters worse, I get tacos at Ravinia Festival and hate them. And I'm like, damn, I had the tacos at Ravinia and they were good. So, yeah. so this was my fault. So shame on me. So next time, you know. I got a little I'm trip. I think it'll be like August 24th. We're going to bike to Ravinia. You're a maniac. And Kings and Convicts. Right on. Kings and Convicts is right down the street from Ravinia. You can take, I think it's the Green Bay Trail, because it runs right next to the train line. Yeah, yeah. And then if you, you know, if you wimp out, you can just take the train. You ever seen deer? I feel like I would see deer on that path, and that's what freaks me oh, out. I don't know. I never. Well, I rode it once when we rode to uh, Tighthead. 
<laughs> Mundelein, Illinois, for those keeping score at home. It's fucking tight head. So I will be making a trip up to Ravinia uh, probably in about a month, yeah. Man. Um, hazy days of summer was Saturday. We missed that. Okay, yeah. yeah. The um, Guild of, no, not the Guild of. No, Chicago, Chicago Beer, Beer Society. Society. Yeah. Um, Windy City Smokeout was this weekend. So the good folks at uh, Knob Creek, mm-hmm. they they had a preview event. So I'm I'm trying to grab the name of their like uh it was like a it's like a it's a roadhouse right it's a roadhouse so they're a weird crew so the name of the roadhouse is the uh, the roadhouse of earned flavor it's a smokehouse right it's, okay. it's it's a smokehouse so it's one of the exhibits at Windy City Smokeout so Windy City Smokeout is like a Friday Saturday party Knob Creek is there they're like you need to come party Thursday before all this all it goes before it all goes down right so Knob Creek for those who don't know Knob Creek is one of the Jim Beam brands right. Um, it's the Jim Bream brand that's like uh, they age it for nine years, right? Okay. Like it's like the one, it's it's uh it's actually me personally I think that's their best offering as a crew. I think Jim Beam. A lot of people like Jim Beam White Label, like Jim Beam the 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 White Label Jim Beam. That's the top selling whiskey on the planet. Like that's the biggest selling whiskey, but not not Creek's their best their best yeah. offering. They do three hundred thousand barrels of this stuff every year. Yeah. Um. So I hung out with those guys. Uh, real quick, man, there were four of them. Uh, it was the OG Knob Creek, uh, the Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve, the Knob Creek Straight Rye, the Single Barrel Rye, and uh, a Cash Strength Knob Creek. The coolest part about this is that um, they had the dudes who make the barrels show up from Kentucky. Okay. And they actually, like, they get a blowtorch and they actually, like, torch a barrel, like, on the spot. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. See. So that was cool. You know, and these, these uh, you know, whiskey is, like, it has to be white oak. New white oak, and then like you char this barrel, they come up, they let you smell it, and it kind of smells just like marshmallows. It's bizarre, like it's got like a kind of like an intoxicating thing. It's like this is fire and wood, and it smells like marshmallows. Like it was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. So that was like that might have been one of that's probably the coolest thing I did all week. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, so I like that. So shout out to Knob Creek, man, and uh, and the the Austin based crew who runs the the uh, the road show. Yeah, because Knob Creek and Jim Beam are based in Merchandise Mart. But they make the whiskey in Claremont, Kentucky. But this crew that goes to these festivals is all based out of Austin, Texas. Okay. So it's a it's a hang. That that was a good time. Cool. Yeah. Man. Whew. Is that? <laughs> is that cover? We were talking in the pregame. We we're like, well, what do we do? I think and that <laughs> covers like a big. Uh, we may have hit up over the past few weeks. Uh-huh. I'm trying to think if there was anything else. But no, that might, that might do it. I, yeah, I feel I feel pretty good about that, Brad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't. I want to say like I can't remember the best thing I drank over the past like couple of weeks. But one thing that stood out for me was, and I don't even know the name, but it's this new beer from Half Acre. Mm-hmm. It has peach in it. It's like a red can. Yeah, yeah, I know. A one-off about. can thing. And it was it was damn good. Yeah, um, they got a little bit of a uh, bold, not Bowdoin, but uh, they got a little bit of Orin left at okay. at uh, the Half Acre. Um, um, we're gonna be going up to Spiteful, so we might have to, you know. Oh shit! Is yeah, it's right next door. At the Half Acre. What you're talking? Yeah, you're talking about the red, the Ray Layer Peach. Yeah. It's a double IPA with oat, wheat, and uh, back breaking <laughs> cold side hop loads. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, peach rubois, which I think is that African tea. Oh, okay. You know, they're not afraid to, like, make, like, these, you know, these weird, almost like, you know, um, not, 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 almost shandies, right? They're making these IPAs with tea, IPAs with, like, a bunch, lo- a boatload of, like, you know, like, like fruit to the point of, like, where it's like a Rattler. Yeah. yeah. It was good. I didn't know it was peach right away, and I, you know, I don't, need, I don't have enough peach beers or eat peach and i was like uh what is that and then someone told me peach i was like oh yeah this this was a great beer yeah no any any standouts from you that you had in the past uh week or two weeks man um just think about half acre i, I might get a boat of for a yeah you know <laughs> you know you know what i had that i hadn't had in a while was the uh, the moody tongue um the grapefruit pilsner from moody tongue that's a really good summer beer yeah, I had that recently, and that that made me really happy. And I was like, man, I forgot how good this beer could be. So, 
Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff, but I think I'm gonna go with that. Nice. Yeah. All right. So coming up this Gra- weekend, Grapefruit Pilsner. I don't know if I said that. Pilsner. Okay. Yeah, it's Grapefruit Pilsner. I don't know what I said, but that's what it was. Sorry. Right. We're just looking for all this fruit and the beaches, <laughs> peaches, and like, grapefruit. Like, give us goddamn fruit. Put some fruit in our beer. And leave us alone. Uh, tomatoes <laughs> and. <laughs> Uh, but coming up this weekend, what do we got? What's coming up? There's a few things happening. There is at uh, headquarters has an event that yeah. we may or may not be at. Yeah, we haven't been to headquarters um, all year. This will be our, our first time. The Wet Hot American Cider Fest, man, July 21st. That's Sunday, uh, noon to 5. So this is uh, 30 of the nation's top ciders. And they're doing it camp style. So they're going to have like dunk tanks. Smash! I want to smash some apples. I got smashing apples, and uh, you know it's at an arcade. So and then their arcade goes two levels. Yeah. Right. Like there's a downstairs. The so. Downstairs is kind of creepy. A little bit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's the only time all year that I usually go to headquarters. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that ought to be fun. And then right after that, if you're feeling frisky, the good folks at Argus Brewing are throwing the summer pint fest at the Columbia Yacht Club. So Columbia Yacht Club is that uh, is the yacht next to Millennium Station, Millennium Park. Okay. Right where Far and Away was that. Oh, But yeah. this, it's docked. It's docked. It doesn't run. It's like a museum, kind of. You know, it just kind of sits there. Yeah. Um, What's happening with our Argus interview? You bring them up for this event. People forget that dro- they're a thing. We're dropping the ball. They're not in the book. Not in the know? book, yeah. Um, and they've been around for at least 10 years. <laughs> you know, and then no one talks about it. So this is a good time to get reacquainted, man. Ten to five. Ten years? Yeah, they've been around. They've been around since like, uh, yeah, for sure ten years. I be right, yeah. Yeah, uh, two to five, also on Sunday. Sunday is the day, man. It's gonna, Sunday's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is 20 online, 25 at the door. So it includes uh, Argus beer, food, and fun in the sun. Nice. And yeah. It, oh, yeah, it says on the flyer, ten years of brewing. It's going to be hot. So you're going to be need. You're going to want to drink. You're going to want to hang out by the water. Yeah. Man. We should. We should, Yeah. That's going to be a good day. All right. But those are the two feature events this week, man. There's other, I don't know what else is going on. All right. Uh, was there any news or should we get out of here? <laughs> um, let's get the hell out of here, bro. All right. We're going to get out of here. Uh, Nick, where can people find you? Get in touch when we're not here. Right on, man. I'm on Twitter at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter at BRAD. Chicago Beer Pass is on Twitter at Chicago Beer Pass. Instagram, Facebook, the YouTube version. There's some new graphics. I'm slowly dropping in. So if you're watching the video, you may have seen some of those happen. Fuck yeah. And we'll be back uh, next week with another episode. Take care. Cheers.